Ethiopia is playing the role of hammer in the Horn of Africa for the United States policy and its war on terror. That's what Ethiopia are doing and therefore they will not withdraw until a new American government, hopefully with a Kenyan affiliated president, tells them that actually this policy is deeply flawed because the puppet regime of British citizens imposed on Somalia by the Ethiopian invasion wouldn't last five minutes if the Ethiopian forces withdrew, they'd have to withdraw with it. And so any government that's going to come to power in Somalia in the future will be filled with hatred of Britain and the United States. This is the problem we keep making everywhere. We intervene either to prop up tyrants or to support tyrants because we don't like the tyrants they're fighting against. And then we generate still more problems for ourselves and we wonder why and we agonizingly debate anti-terrorism laws why so many people in the Muslim world want to hurt us why so many young people in the Muslim world are so bitter and angry about us that they want to hurt us well is it any wonder can it be any wonder to any sane person I'm giving way in a second to the honorable gentleman can it be any wonder it's these kind of policies I, I, I beg the minister to believe me because I'm talking to Somalis all the time. The rage felt in the Somali community in Britain and around the world about Britain and America's role in their country is generating a terrorist. Let me spell it out as the uh, right honorable gentleman who saved the government's bacon earlier uh, this evening is now in his place. Let me spell it out as we spent so many hours discussing anti-terrorism. We are making new terrorists in Britain with our policy towards Somalia, with our double standards, with our hypocrisy. I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. The Honourable uh, Gentleman has been very generous. Whilst the uh, government of Ethiopia is not perfect, and indeed there are governments closer to home uh, that aren't perfect, and, and it's absolutely right that human rights abuses by the, the Somali security services are fully investigated, does nevertheless he accept that if Ethiopian troops at this current time withdrew that would create a security vacuum into which terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda, would create mayhem in the Horn of Africa, a key and strategic location, and that would come back to haunt us. But Mr. Deadly Speaker, I said in this house over there, when we recalled the house just a few days after the atrocity of 9-11, you'll forgive me quoting myself, I said, if we handle this the wrong way, we'll make 10,000 new Bin Ladens. And we have handled it the wrong way. And we have made 10,000 new Bin Ladens. And the problem of Al-Qaeda in Somalia has been made worse by the Western intervention and the Ethiopian invasion. Far more people have been recruited to a narrow, fundamentalist, separatist, violent Islamism by our policy than ever would have been if that policy had never been formed. The Honourable Gentleman obviously hasn't read this Amnesty International document. The Ethiopian forces are not providing security, they're providing mass murder and mass terror in the occupied Somalia. The refugee camps are full of two million people. No one can walk on the streets of Mogadishu. Channel 4's reporters were almost killed making their program. Some of their team on the same vehicle with them were shot dead live on television while they were making... well. The Honourable Gentleman from a sedentary position says by Somalis. I don't know if they were by Somalis or by Ethiopians. The point is, the country has been plunged into utter lawlessness and to pretend that the Ethiopian government is providing security in a country with whom security should never be mentioned in the same sentence is completely ridiculous. There may be a need for African Union forces. There may be a need for Arab League forces. And I hope, in conclusion, and I'm sorry, I apologize to the Minister for taking a minute more than I ought to, but I'll close on this point. There may be a need for other forces. This conflict is going to go on. I hope the Minister is not going to claim that the deal reached this week is any kind of deal for solving this problem. Because the people who are doing the fighting are not involved in the deal. It would be like uh, a peace process in the north of Ireland. Uh, which excluded the people who were doing the fighting. That's what's been reached uh, with relation to Somalia. Policy 
than ever would have been if that policy had never been formed. The Honourable Gentleman obviously hasn't read this Amnesty International document. The Ethiopian forces are not providing security, they're providing mass murder and mass terror in the occupied Somalia. The refugee camps are full of two million people. No one can walk on the streets of Mogadishu. Channel 4's reporters were almost killed making their program. Some of their team on the same vehicle with them were shot dead live on television while they were making. Well, the honourable gentleman from a sedentary position says by Somalis. I don't know if they were by Somalis or by Ethiopians. The point is, the country has been plunged into utter lawlessness and to pretend that the Ethiopian government is providing security in a country with whom security should never be mentioned in the same sentence is completely ridiculous. There may be a need for African Union forces. There may be a need for Arab League forces. And I hope, in conclusion, and I'm sorry, I apologize to the Minister for taking a minute more than I ought to, but I'll close on this point. There may be a need for other forces. This conflict is going to go on. I hope the Minister is not going to claim that the deal reached this week is any kind of deal for solving this problem. Because the people who are doing the fighting are not involved in the deal. It would be like uh, a peace process in the north of Ireland, uh, which excluded the people who were doing the fighting. That's what's been reached uh, with relation to Somalia in the last few days. So, I'm grateful to you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, even more grateful for the extra time that I got, and I apologize for my churlish point of order, which turned out to be entirely misconstrued. And I do hope that we get some answers from the Minister this evening. Meg Munn. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the opportunity to reply to the member for Bethnal Green and Bow on this debate. I see this as an excellent chance to highlight how the Foreign and Commonwealth Office seeks to address a number of issues relating to Somalia. As my noble friend, the Minister for Africa, said in his statement this afternoon, we congratulate the Somali Transitional Federal Government and the Alliance for the Reliberation of Somalia on reaching agreement to the cessation of violence. This agreement was signed by both parties in Djibouti on Monday and has been witnessed by members of the international community. I wish to thank the UN Secretary General's Special Representative Amadou Old Abdallah on his continued efforts to mediate the talks between the parties which resulted in the agreement. This is a positive step and we look forward to all parties fulfilling their commitment to cease armed confrontation. We are committed to work with the UN to support this process. Human rights issues in Somalia are long-standing and complex. They cannot be attributed to any one cause and there are no easy or obvious solutions. Somalia is not like other countries. Serious violence, lack of governance structures and the deteriorating humanitarian situation have been ongoing for 17 years. Many in Somali society have been brutalised by years of violence. It is therefore often individuals not answerable to any particular group or commander who carry out abuses on their own initiative. This makes it even more difficult to prevent further abuses and to bring those responsible to justice. Given this complexity and the insecurity in Somalia, there is little opportunity to monitor the situation reliably or gather and verify facts or allegations. Reporting is often biased and may be exaggerated to exert influence on the international community. The only sustainable way to address human rights in the long term is to engage in effective state building, concentrating on developing institutions, parliamentary accountability, an inclusive security sector and delivery of basic services. Short term fixes that don't focus on state building will mean we return to this issue year after year, prolonging the suffering of the Somali people. Reports of incidents and accusations of human rights abuses by Ethiopian troops are difficult to corroborate and have been categorically denied by the Ethiopian government. Ethiopian troops in Somalia are carrying out a role that security providers currently in Somalia do, uh, do not have the capacity for. Many critics forget that fighting between militias has been going on for 15 years 
before Ethiopia intervened at the invitation of Somalia's transitional federal government. African Union member nations have not yet committed to contributing sufficient troops to allow for full deployment of the African Union mission in Somalia, which currently has only 2,400 of the 8,000 uh, 8, troops mandated. Further planning for a possible UN mission was called for by UN Security Council Resolution 1814, although this is unlikely to be mandated soon. Evidence from other Ethiopian peacekeeping deployments indicates that they make a positive contribution to missions. Ethiopian troops are